She's dominated the headlines this week, and it was no easy feat as well. She came home for a short bit this week. We'll leave next week uh, for Miami. In that time, she agreed to sit down with me and uh, to do an interview and reflect on what this entire journey has meant to her, her family, and everybody who has been coordinated with this trip to Tokyo 2020. The hard times, the good times, she spoke about it all. Let's play you that interview. Well, we're here with Tenille Campbell, the Trinidad and Tobago cyclist who has just qualified for the Olympic Games. First woman in the English-speaking Caribbean to do so. Tenille, thanks a lot for agreeing to do this interview with us. How does it feel? It's been less than a week since you've gotten the news. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to be honest, I still don't have the emotions that I think everyone would expect. And yeah, I guess this is just me not getting carried away and is trying to stay focused and just working towards that um, competing next year. When you got the news, uh, how did what was your reaction? Well, I knew quite some time now that I have qualified based on my ranking, based on how I have been performing. So it it didn't come as a shock to me, but I knew um, for everyone, just an official statement would be like a good relief of their shoulders and well myself as well. So, I mean, it was just a good feeling in the moment. When you look back on this journey of trying to qualify for the Olympic Games and now succeeding, uh, you know, what comes to mind? This entire journey, what has this entire journey meant to you? Um, well, just knowing that it was in this same house that is where it started in the spare, the bike room, in the back there where we just were. Um, the night before traveling to Martinique, packing, organizing tickets with Mr. Desmond, um, my mom and Kevin Tinto, um, and just rushing over to Martinique and winning the double. Um, that was just my golden opportunity. And thankfully to Mr. Desmond Roberts for believing in me, I don't think any of, any of this would have been possible because if I didn't go to Martinique, I wouldn't be who I am today because maybe I wouldn't have gotten that train instant to go to um, Switzerland to train. So, Let's talk a little bit about Desmond Roberts, who's been your longtime manager. Uh, he's been a real pillar in your career. Yes, indeed, because it was really when I joined PSL Cycling Club is where I think oh, for, for sure there was Mr. Desmond Roberts here behind me 100%. And backing me straight through 100, straight like from from the beginning till the end. No matter if I didn't do good, if I, he knew I did my best because he knew the type of person I am, and he knew that wherever I do, I want to win, and I'm gonna do my best at all times. So he believed in me when no one else did, and he took the initiatives to even dig in his pocket if he had to fund something for me. And that was really genuine and nice to actually meet that type of person um, at, such a at such a young age in my sporting career. You know, you just wrapped up a year at the UCI World Cycling Center in Switzerland. Uh, we know that it's done a tremendous amount of good for your career. When you look back on the last year, uh, what do you make of it now heading into an Italian club? <laughs> well... I know it's going to be completely different. Um, at the UCI Center, they take care of you. They, cov they, they prepare the meals and everything. Um, we all stay together in a house. Um, so with this new Italian team, I have to cook for myself. <laughs> um, yeah, I will have roommates in the, in the team house, but you don't know. You, you can't just walk around the corner and knock on your friend's door or you're not sure that you're going to get along with this person. So it's going to be completely different and a brand new um, lifestyle for me. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to this new journey and new obstacle. You know, you're the first person, uh, first international cyclist that uh, this club has signed. Uh, so, you know, it's a, it's a pretty big move for you. And it's also a pretty big move for them as well. Yeah, <laughs> um, the team is really excited. 
the riders are excited. Um, there are a lot of people in Italy who are excited. Um, from what I've heard, they are talking about me a lot across there. So, yeah, it's just excitement from both sides and looking forward to working together and seeing how much successful we can be next year as a unit and how well we mesh together as a team. Tenniel, you know, your life has changed tremendously since Martinique. Now you travel the world, you're always on a plane, you're always cycling professionally, you meet scores of people every week. You know, when you when you look back on, on everything that cycling has given to you and now you're heading towards Tokyo 2020, you know, you must get a little bit emotional. Um, yeah, because, I mean, knowing the things that I went through to get where I am today is... I know it really brings a lot of tears to my family eyes and everyone who supported me from when I wasn't really anything. They saw something for me. <sighs> yeah, from from the beginning. So that's good. And I hope to make everyone proud. You know, people tend to forget that uh, there was a time when people didn't believe in you. Um, we see the headlines now. Um, but there was a time when people didn't believe that Tineel Campbell could achieve anything in cycling. Mm, yeah. Uh, it's kind of funny because now it's the same people coming to try to talk to me or get on to me. So, I mean, that's kind of a scary feeling for me because y you don't know who is coming to you genuine right now. So, yeah. Your mom, she's uh, quite a woman and she's been with you throughout this journey as well uh you know to have qualified for the olympic games must make her extremely proud <laughs> yeah she's really happy um being an athlete herself and this being the only game she never qualified for so um i'm i hope that she will be there with me in tokyo and can live that dream through 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 her daughter myself so Tokyo 2020 for mom and daughter, and your your brother is a cyclist as well. Yeah, you know, I really want him to come with me as well. So, yeah. I hope for that to just have my family there. Every well, try to have the the core support with me. Um, that's really important. I mean, for me, is being comfortable and not being stressed out. And so on race day, I know there's no excuses. It's just to es execute and do my best. You know, when you look at the people who have supported you uh, in cycling, that's one thing. Do you think that, do you ever, has Trinidad and Tobago supported you in your career? Do you, have you ever felt that you were let down by the country in your cycling career and you had to rely on this core group of people only? Um, well, mm, it depends on how you look at it because recently, um, for my world championships, the Olympic Committee, they supported me a bit. Even the sport company of Trinidad and Tobago and the Ministry of Sport. Um, so, well, I know is it, it didn't start at the early stages and it's now coming, but um, is not something that I really try to take on because it's not good as an athlete. You, your, your focus is just supposed to be on training and uh, using what you have, the tools you have to, to continue developing. And when the time is right, everything will just start falling into place. And like I said, I was lucky to meet Mr. Desmond Roberts. Um, so yeah, everything just started falling into place for me. And here I am now. First woman cyclist to have qualified for the Olympic Games in the English-speaking Caribbean. How difficult a feat was this? <laughs> well, to think of, well, I don't think I sat down and really t think about it, but it was only two years ago when this journey started. So it's really a short space of time to accomplish this. I guess this goes to show how dedicated I am um, to my craft and that once I put my mind to something, um, I'm just that committed and I'm going to go go after it and achieve it. So I'm really happy to 
have that type of mental strength and that my entourage around me is really strong and uplifting because yeah i'm human as well i'm gonna have my breakdown and emotional moments so yeah it's not a one-man show so i'm really happy for everyone around me as well tell us about those moments though Tanil. i mean to qualify for the olympic games is one thing and we we see all the headlines we see all the successes we cover every time you win a gold medal but behind all those gold and behind all those qualifications and all those first places, there is a real hard worker in you that people don't see. <laughs> yeah. What are your days like? <sighs> in Trinidad or in Europe? Every day. Because you've been training even while you're back home here. Um, well, before leaving for Switzerland, well, the lead up to this, I was going to school um, when I was at baby secondary um well i did both cxc and cape so i remember in C for when i was at the cxc level well leading up to my cxc examinations um i had just gotten back into cycling and well i was doing sciences so wanting to take that that step just before cxc some teachers were like what are you doing <laughs> but i was like it's okay i can i can juggle the boat so yeah i passed all subjects eight of them with ones and twos and then i went on to do cape i still did my cycling and yeah i, I even kept improving in the sport so it's just about being committed and making sacrifices and yeah i did my cape examinations i passed with ones and twos and well, a three in caribbean so i think for me being in school um still being able to do good in sports is good at a young age because it teaches you a lot of responsibilities because if you ask all my teachers i was never the one to really sleep in class and stuff like this um i i, I well yes i used to reach school late sometimes but <laughs> i mean it wasn't intentional or anything i will still try to give all my assignments up on time my labs report and everything it was the same when I went to the University of Trinidad and Tobago. I, n I never slept in class. I was really tired, but I, I, kept, I kept awake. So, yeah. You are and can be an extraordinary example for not just women in cycling and not just young girls who want to cycle and, and watch you, but you can be a real example for women as a whole. What would you like this entire journey towards Tokyo and this entire experience of being the first w woman from the English-speaking Caribbean to have qualified for an Olympics in cycling, what message would you like to leave this part of your journey to leave? Mm, I'm not sure right now. At the moment, I'm just trying to break all the barriers because I knew what it, what it took for me to get here. So for the others, it's just trying to open up doors for them and... Well, I know there's going to be someone out there wanting to do better than me, so it's really good for me to set the level so high and the standard so high that whoever is coming up have to work really hard and they'll even be better than me. And I think with that cycle, we can keep getting the best out of um, upcoming athletes in Trinidad and Tobago. In between now and Tokyo 2020, you have to keep working hard, uh, but also, have you found time to enjoy the uh, fact that you're that you've qualified? <sighs> oh no. <laughs> Sorry. No, I haven't gotten time to enjoy anything much. It's just been on the go since I returned home. I mean, I surprised my entire family, so everyone is trying to, you know, spend as much time with me. Um, well, with the news coming out now, everyone is trying to, like, have a conversation. My my school, Davy Secondary, they want me to come and talk to the kids. It's, it's just a lot going on right now for me. So um, hopefully when I go by my dad, I can really have some personal time because I wouldn't want to think anyone would come to Miami to try to talk to me. So yeah, it's just a little getaway to really clear my head and reflect on this season and what's coming forward. Daniel Campbell, congratulations once again on qualifying for Tokyo 2020 and we wish you the best there. Thank you. You could watch the entire interview with Tanil Campbell. Of course, she got really emotional in that one as well. Uh, you can watch that at cnc3.co.tt slash sports. It's available on all our online platforms.